How Excel Calculates Time. In Excel, one day equals one, which represents 24 hours. So we can see that three hours, or 3 a.m., is a fraction of 24, which is the decimal 0.125. Okay, so why do you care about that? It's just so you know, when you're dealing with time in a calculation, what Excel sees is not time or a date, it's a serial number. It's an actual number that Excel is dealing with. Okay, let's get on with it. When start time and end time are in the same day, then calculating duration in hours is pretty straightforward. For example, if you have a start time of 6 a.m. and an end time of 6 p.m., you can simply use this formula. Equal end time minus the start time. Notice the formatting, though. It is 12 hours, but I don't want my accumulation time, my total hours, represented as a time. I want this to be a total number. So I do have to go up to my number formatting, and I'm going to change that to... If I change it to number, then I have 0.5. That's not what I'm going for. So I may have to go down to more number formats, select time, and then under type, choose something that's going to work for me. If you don't like any of these options within the time category, you can create a custom. But what happens when time crosses midnight? Calculating elapsed time is more tricky if the time is over multiple days or if it crosses that midnight barrier. For example, if the start time is 9 p.m. one day and the end time is 4 a.m. the next day, the end time is actually less than the start time, and our simple formula we used before will return a negative value. And in Excel, time cannot be displayed as a negative. If time is represented as a negative, you will see the error code with the hashtags. This is not the same as your column is not wide enough to display a number. No matter how wide I make this column, I still have this error because what's happening is it is returning a negative number. So what is the solution? Well, here are a few different formulas that I could use to actually make this work. Let's try the first one. Now, is that seven hours? It is seven hours, but notice the formatting. So I will once again have to change this total hours from a time format to a different format. And maybe I can just use my format painter to copy this number formatting. And there we go. So it has its seven hours. You can also search the internet for a solution. And you will see a ton of different solutions. So there is more than just a couple of ways to remedy the calculation over multiple days. But let's not make this too complicated. Let's see if there is a much simpler way that we can do this. What about just using both date and time? If we let Excel know what the different dates are, then it doesn't have the same issue with time. To enter a date and time together, use a single space between the time and the date. So for this example, I know that the date 
was January 7th. which means that 4 a.m. would be January 8th. Now, even though I'm not seeing the date within the cell, if we look up at the formula bar, I now see the date. So now if I do a simple calculation, end time minus start time, it works. When you're formatting time durations, just remember that by default, Excel may display time, even time that represents a duration, using the AM and PM. And you saw that in the examples that I was showing. So for example, if you have a calculated time of six hours, Excel is probably going to display it as 6 AM. To remove that AM or PM, you're going to need to play with some different number formattings. And in cases where the calculated time exceeds 24 hours, you might want to use a custom format. And that is how Excel calculates time. Thank you for watching this video, and if you got something out of it, please subscribe to my channel. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.